write that. Write that down. Hello from Tokyo. Hello from Burbank. What's up, Mr. Uh, Fumi Saito? Hello. This is our latest episode episode of Write That Down. Write that. I guess we um, um we're getting a lot of new listeners out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, if they listen to this uh, our opening segment, uh, the music, they say, write that down for me, write that down for me, write that down for me. They can still hear it, right? Mm-hmm. I want people to know that that's Chris Jericho. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, for, 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 for newer, you know, more new listeners out there, actually that the title of, of our podcast, write that down, came from Chris Jericho's quote. Yeah, five years ago. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, five, six years ago. Five, six years ago. Five. Oh yeah, I know. When you were younger, five years is like for you know, like for eternity. Right. Yeah, but But it was like I think so. It was like five years ago. Yeah, it was from like the Chris Jericho's press conference from Tokyo, the New Japan press conference, and he did this, and then you know the destroy table and all these things, and like running angle. And he said, write that down for me, Saito. That's right. So we, I was taking notes and uh, we recorded it. So said, let's use that quote for the t- title of, of, of a podcast you know, program. Mm. So that's how it all started. Then you composed the music. And uh, now we have this forever, <laughs> write that down, that the opening. Our signature, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Write that down. It's a very journalist, you know, journalistic. Yeah. Hey, I just like write that down. Yeah, you have to write it down. The, the reason I'm saying this, write that down, is important is that, you know, I teach college courses, right? Mm-hmm. Some of these students, today's college student, they don't even bring pencils and notes, you know? Yeah. Pandas, I mean, don't you take notes, you know? And, uh, I've seen just, a lot of students that like take pictures. Like, yeah, yeah. Take pictures of maybe your notes, like on the. Oh, yeah, I don't even notes. use that. Uh, what you, uh, the whiteboard. Uh, or not you... a whiteboard, but uh, you know the PowerPoint. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. Smart... Once you use the PowerPoint, mm-hmm. that's up on uh, uploaded somewhere in in uh, like a teacher's office hour, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they think they can look at it later. Mm-hmm. PowerPoint, you know, it's like online, you know, content. But uh, I use like, like, like print, you know, yeah, handout, you know, it's like, like a resume, you know, like a lecture resume. And then, uh, th- those are the things you can actually sit down and listen to the lecture. You take note from the, to what, what, what your professor is saying, you know, that's college. But anyhow, that the, um, it's important to take note sometimes. It's, you remember that you know, th- things that way, you know? Yeah, I think so. I mean, everybody put the has pieces different... of pieces of puzzle together. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that. people have different uh, like ways of learning and remembering things. So I understand everybody has their own way, but I know what you mean too. And for me, I gotta write. Yeah, down. that's why I got my notebook right here, so I can write all our notes down. <laughs> all <laughs> write our that down. Stamps. Yeah. <laughs> I actually yeah, I have and a couple also, of these, I huh? came from the generation where, you know, in the backstage where wrestlers are make, make, you know giving com- you know I- interview and you know comments, I take take note with my pen, yeah, oh, yeah and a little course. bit of tape recorder, you know. But uh, you gotta okay. write it down sometimes. How about this? This is a little bit of a sidebar, but talking about you know technology and and, and how things used to be when I was a kid. Yeah. I was still learning about you know, pro wrestling and, and whatever. A lot of the wrestlers backstage, it was really important. It seemed to be really important to have a, like a, a a book for everybody's phone number. Yeah, of course. The phone and number. Little notepad. Yeah. Or like the spe- like the fat book, like the fat. Uh, everybody had everybody else's phone number. Like maybe something like maybe this, like yeah. something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Everybody had to have you, the the bigger that was. The more status you had, you know, yeah. but there were some guys that would kind of brag about how many phone numbers they had, and they weren't really, you know what I mean? I got yeah. this guy's yeah. phone number. I got this guy's phone number. I got the before know. the emails and and, and yeah. the internet and the social media, let alone, yeah, of course. 
the it, probably some of the wrestlers phone number it was even before the answering machine <laughs> you know? Could be. yeah then make sure that they are home you know to answer the phone so let's go after 10 you know 10 <laughs> you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. 9 30 10 they should be home like that yeah and actually saying in japan like a moshi moshi yeah, that's right yeah. yeah and nobody does moshi moshi anymore in this country in my in, in japan even so not even at businesses um they send you text emails oh uh, yeah 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 that's right or I know things okay. online you know apps mm. Yeah, yeah, it's like almost inhuman. And uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, it's good to say moshi moshi and start actually having a phone conversation. Sure. And there was a hand gesture like this, remember? Mm-hmm. I'll call you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The gesture for, uh, for uh, I'll call you. I'll call you back. I'll call you on the payphone. <laughs> they don't know payphones, okay? I think there's still some payphones in Tokyo, aren't there? Uh, nobody uses right but all it's the guys yeah em- emergency it's very emergency yeah only. like a, the the pay phone like a box little box like a little mm-hmm. booth you, you walk in yeah mm-hmm. anyhow we're doing bona cano's legacy yep. um she is actually a very first japanese women's wrestler to be inducted into wwe hall of fame there are four other male wrestlers before Antonio Inoki, Tatsumi Fujinami, Jushin Sander Liger, and Keiji Muto, uh, Great Muta. Yeah, yeah, those four. And fifth Japanese wrestler to be inducted into Hall of Fame, but very first female superstar. That's very important. Yeah, and also Bo Nakano herself taking this WWE Hall of Fame very seriously. That she told me that once uh, that she won the red belt or Japan Women's WWWA world women's wrestling association red belt world champion right then she went to mexico and, and won the cmll women's world title then wwf wwe wwf at the time she had wwf world women's title so she is like a grand, grand slam of world champion right mm-hmm. and the only thing she really actually i mean really take it seriously you know wanted to have was to be inducted into wwe hall of fame so she's taking this very seriously yeah she's been wanting this for yeah like some quite some time yeah and uh we talk about bo nakano's legacy you know from 1990s right but when you talk about things from 90s we're talking easily from 30 years ago huh you know oh, yeah yeah like, like i yes i'm an old old dude uh, you know talk about things from 30 years like that was just like yesterday and to me it was like yesterday but it's not you know um you and i talk about that that we have a lot of new listeners if this wrestling fans in 20s there's no way you know they remember bonacano against alandra blaze you know it's from 93 94 95 you know and uh if you're in the 40s you were a little kid, you know? So mm-hmm. you have to be a little over 50 years old to even remember this, actually watching uh, on WWE t- television or pay-per-view that Bonacano against Alandra Blaze, Medusa, I, sh- I should call it, the title match. And only one women's match among eight other men's match, right? Mm-hmm. Not like today's men, WWE men's division and women's division. And sometimes Raw, SmackDown, I wouldn't say half, but uh, you have three or four women's segment, you know, in, in one show. And uh, title, the women's world title or SmackDown title and Raw title and tag team title. And there's other storylines, the Becky Lynch, the, you know, Nia Jax, the, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so gotten a lot richer in this women's segment. That's only been, what, 10 years or so? 15. 10, at, 15. Yeah, 10, 10, 15. At, at the longest. But uh, in that, uh, uh, Bo Nakano against Alandra Blaze program was almost pioneer uh, in WWF, you know, that uh, they gave them time. Because until then, believe it or not, in 
okay, like in 80s, when you had actually had the women's title match in WWF ring, like early, early WrestleMania era, it was still Fabulous Moolah against Wendy Richter. For you years know? and years. Yeah, so it was, of course, most of the wrestlers, you know, all the way till like 80s in America, most of the female wrestlers are trained under Fabulous Moolah school. Therefore, Fabulous Moolah being champion, they only needed one challenger at a time. You know, you didn't, they never needed women's division, like 30, 40 wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Not that they didn't have, there were other female wrestlers out there in the world. And all, in Japan, Joshi Pro Rest has always been the entity of its own. Women's wrestling in Japan was never part of men's company. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And all Japan, women's. So, I think we did that that uh, episode or two on Japanese women's wrestling. Yeah. But uh, for the newer listeners out there, the Japanese women's wrestling, Joshi Pro Wrestle, was never part of a men's company. They always had th th their own entity with 30, 40, sometimes 50 female wrestlers in, in the main roster, and they just have this women's show, you know, completely different from Giant Baba's Old Japan and Anto Inoki's New Japan Pro Wrestling. They had their own set of, well, company and all, own set of superstar, and they own, had their own set of market and fans. Yeah. And you have that the, who, Bo Nakano being first female wrestler to be inducted into Hall of Fame is very, very important. Although, although some, some of the you know, fans out there don't take WWE Hall of Fame too seriously, but I, that's another subject for another day, you know. And uh, the Bonacano really wanted to be in this Hall of Fame, and uh, we got to go through this, you know, the, the legacy because her Bonacano's uh, prime time uh, was actually in eighties and nineties. In nineties, it's like, oh my gosh, we, <laughs> I'm talking about talking about 90s from you know like it was just like yesterday it was for me it was like yesterday but it's actually 30 years ago she started wrestling professionally in 1983 when she was 15 15 age 15 Bo Nakano Keiko Nakano first she finished ninth grade and didn't even go back to school for 10th grade she signed with all Japan women's when before her 16th birthday she was still 15. yeah that's young huh Pretty and young. uh she was uh the uh, spent rookie year much like new japan's young lion you know keiko nakano with just regular bathing suit type you know wrestling gear no gimmick or anything like that but february of 85 she was recruited into uh, then Goku Akudome Goku 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 of Dump Matsumoto, the legendary Dump Matsumoto. Then I remember the, the time that the February of 85, born, young Bonakano, Keiko Nakano at the time, she went into this beauty you know, parlor and, and had the half of her head shaped as a half mohawk. That was the day she became Bonakano, you know? And uh, she was, what, 16? Yeah. 16 at the time when she changed herself new identity to be Bo Nakano and tag team young tag you know tag team partner of Damp Matsumoto that's where this thing started it's always been in the heel side you know and uh, when you talk about a early 80s it was Crash Girls era for all Japan women's wrestling Crash Girls Lioness Asuka and Chigusa Nagayo so 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 super huge I mean, like phenomenal. Just well, as a wrestler, they're great wrestlers. But it was like Crash Girls era, we call it. They had all well, the popular wrestler, of course. They had the singing, and you know, they got you know they had their own albums, and you know at the time records, LP, out you know vinyl records, and cassette tapes, and single record. Like if you remember, 80, 45 single record, and they had their own concerts singing concert they had their own musical opera like a stage play they had their own movies 
and they had their generation of teenage teenage female fans. I mean, wherever they went, Crash Girls was so popular, so popular. What happened was though, when Crash Girls basically didn't really retire, but the, when they graduated from All Japan Women's Wrestling, all those teenage, you know, big this whole new, whole generation of teenage female fans they left too mm -hmm. yeah it, it started like 88 89 that uh Chiusa nagayo Lionel Sasuka, they decided to basically graduate you know from all japan women at the time all, all japan women had this you know rule you know no smoking no drinking uh, no boyfriend thing and that the, the they had this 25 year age of 25 year you have to retire from wrestling mm. they were doing it really so it was there was like a, no gimmick they were going to either retire or graduate from women's wrestling and do something else you know chigusa nagayo had their own movie made and just, they were going to be the regular entertainment talent too but uh, when Crash Girls left All Japan Pro Wrestling. Like I said, generation of female teenage fans, they all left. Oh my gosh. And business of All Japan women really nosedived for a year. Yeah. Yeah. Because all these very marketing, they marketed well, uh, they're so popular, but they took their fans with them when they left. And uh, all Japan women needed new star, and uh, they made Mitsuko Nishiwaki as for as a WWWA Red Belt World Champion, but it w wasn't wasn't big success uh, until it was 90, January of 1990. Hio Bonakano beat Mitsuko Nishiwaki to be the Red Belt World Champion. That was Bo Nakano's first reign. Bo was born in January 8th, January 8th of 1968. The title, when she became, you know, Red Belt World Champion, January 4th of 1990, meaning that the, it was just a few days before her 22, 22nd birthday. She was only 21 years old. Superstar Bo Nakano had, you know, the blue makeup, just... Your picture perfect, Bo Nakano. She was 21, 22, very early boomer, huh? You know, well, of course, she started when she was 15, but uh, she was actually responsible of bringing male fans into the building. Very successful. See, I was involved, you know, to uh, the, the weekly pro wrestling magazine, and at the time, there was another ma monthly magazine called Deluxe Pro Wrestling. Deluxe Pro Wrestling only dealt with, basically dealt with, with women's wrestling. Crash Girls, you know, era, the magazine, in magazine, the monthly Crash Girls and all these things that uh, they were popular, but I could not really sit in Korakuen Hall when Crash Girls was so huge because it was all female teenage fan doing, the, you know, just choreographed chatting and then just... Wearing matching kimono, matching happy gown for the pom poms. Pom pom, yeah. It's like a, they had the yeah. You see in the video, right? It wasn't for male fans. You just couldn't get involved. But it was Bo Nakano who actually demonstrated her wrestling instead of Crash Girls star power star or thing. Bo Nakano's era, she just went in there, had this straight professional wrestling match and they were, it was like i wasn't prejudiced but probably a lot of male fans at the time was pretty prejudiced oh crash girls and all japan women and it's for the teenage girls right it wasn't paying much attention when bonakano's era began it was like was women's wrestling this good yeah, I guess it, it's been it's been good all along since Jackie Sato, the Maki Ueda, the Mahafumiake. They were actually good, but it was male fan that weren't paying much attention. It was Bo Nakano who pulled male audience into the building. It's like, and it's like, open the eyes. Wow, we did not know. 
and uh, therefore Bonakano era began. 1990, 91, 92, 93, until she dropped the belt to another paint, Aja Khan. Yeah. And actually, it was um, for the American market, Bo Nakano, Dump Matsumoto, Crash Girls, Lion Asuka, and Chibisa Nagayo, they toured WWE, WWF at uh, the once in 86. It was Fuji Television's thing that... Uh, Crash Girls and Dump Matsumoto Bonakano came to Madison Square Garden and then the Fuji Television taped the thing. So it Bo, Bo was 18 then. Yeah. Did they do something at the Boston uh Boston, Boston Garden? Garden? I think so. Yeah. So, but it was mainly they used WWE platform to film things for Fuji Television at the time. Mm. But they did come in for Madison Square Garden, like Madison Square Garden, you know. And uh, that was her first experience. But this Bo Nakano era almost started accidentally, right? Because they weren't going to make heel a, cha- a world champion. That, that's why Mitsuko Nishiwaki was, you know, the world champion after Crash Girls era. But uh, it just wasn't making it. And it was Bo, heel though, you know, the dress like heel and work like heel, but she had this very convincing pro wrestling match that the captured male audience, you know, like, wow, we didn't know, you know, the Bonacan was this good, the, uh, the women's wrestling being this good and uh, kind of prejudice, right? But the, yes, it was Bonacano. It changed the mindset of female uh, male fans in Japan. It was very important. Yeah, in hindsight, it, it, we, it, I couldn't, you know, really uh, analyze this until uh, years later. You know, of course, yeah, because yeah, it was kind of new at the time. You know, yeah, Bonacano. Yeah, I, I, the Dump Matsumoto retired in '88, so Bonacano, 22 year old Bonacano, all of a sudden was in on her own, right? And no more Gokumonto, she became the leader of Goku, uh, no, no, no more Goku Akudome, and she became a new faction, the leader of uh, the, the Gokumonto, yeah. Then she, she had, Bonakano had the Grizzly Iwamoto, the Bison Kimura, the Aja Kang, the, the whole new set of the, the, the Black Costume Heel faction. And it was a fe- fe- heel faction that led this. All the male fan migrated into the building. We got to watch women's wrestling now. Yeah. Mm. And it just uh, opened the eye. It was interesting because when you talk about 88, 89, 90, it was like a UWF era too. Mm-hmm. You know, in the male wrestling, UWF, I'm talking about Akira Maeda, the, you know, Nobuhiko Takada, the Fujiwara, the, they're doing like a, almost MMA looking wrestling in New Japan ring, you know, and all these things. And then say, around the same time, Onita started this death match, you know, like a, on the on the way in the other side of spectrum. You got a UWF like wrestling, you got an Onita style wrestling, and this is. You already had this establishment. Anthony Noki's New Japan Pro Wrestling, Giant Baba's Old Japan Wrestling, it's got old tra- traditional professional wrestling. So there should, you know, there are a lot more to it than than what we see. Then it really opened our eyes that we should really pay equal attention to what's going on in female women's wrestling uh, part. And Bo Nakano was really responsible that she was just as good as any male superstars out there, if not better. Are you following me? Yeah. And that, uh, that era was pretty violent, uh, just as much as any UWF of the time or or whatever Onita was doing. Before was- there was no, there was such thing as MMA. And the UWF, Maeda, Takada, Fujiwara, Yamazaki, these people are doing the closest thing to MMA, huh? You know, the women were, were dabbling in both too. There was yeah, all bit. Japan women. Yeah, you're probably talking about the kickboxing match between Medusa and Aja Kong. Kickboxing That's a great example. rule. Yeah, yeah, kickboxing rule. Two wrestlers though, but it actually had not work. 
straight kickboxing match between Aja Kong and Medusa. It was like, oh, oh that, well, some something really serious. But it really proved that, you know, it's, women's wrestlers are nothing, no less than male wrestlers, you know. Mm. It really proved that. And they, all Japan women company at the time was running what the, anywhere from 200 to you know 250 shows a year more shows than men, men's group but, so and that's up and down japan countries it's, it's not just yeah. big tokyo shows it's, it's no no the all japan women is a kind of company that the wrestlers and the staff they build the ring they build their own concession they clean up the place and they pack up and you know, and then, then, then put everything back in the truck and get on the bus and go to next town and do it all over again tomorrow, kind of thing. Like very, like fundamental, like old-fashioned pro wrestling, you know, professional wrestling company. Yeah, and and all female, very unique, huh? And, and Medusa got involved and did all that, you know, building up a ring and uh, you know, build the concession stand and then stand on the concession, sell your own gimmick too, you know. And between in you know matches, there's a in, in, you know intermission, and the wrestlers start come out and sing too. Mm -hmm. You know, Aja Khan and Bonakano didn't really sing, but Medusa did that too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure how many fans realized the singing part of women's pro wrestling. It's it's been a all party. Japan women's all Japan women, but it, only. The, but in terms of the genre and and singing, it's pretty normal. It's just it's a regular part of what's going oh, on. All Japan women's wrestling since seventies, mm. yeah, yeah, or beauty, idols, beauty yeah. pair, yeah, beauty, beauty pair, pair, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, everybody yeah. else who followed it, yeah, yeah. Then actually, they were selling this mini, you know, singles record, you know, concession. They buy it, and wrestlers are always, you know. At, at the concession, they buy your album, record, or set tape, or poster. They're right there and they sign all, you know, all we have on it. It's just, in that, probably they were, you know, going like a decade ahead of the time, huh? Hmm. Yeah, because yeah. even New Japan and Old Japan, for the longest time, wrestling merchandise only meant T-shirt and keychains, you know? Hmm. Now they sell everything, right? But uh, all Japan women, they were selling a lot of just merchandise, gimmick, and wrestlers themselves was going around the you know audience crowd and selling it, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, very self self sufficient company. Never flew, never be on bullet train or anything like that. They are on on this tour bus every night, town to town to town to town, you know, and uh, so um, they were very self sufficient, and then uh, they didn't really spend a lot of you know expense you know mm. and they were in the cheapest hotel every night and they, they go to the next town and do it all over 250 shows or three to 300 shows a year and bo nakano was the big superstar that era yeah anywhere you went you know and when you talk about you know like leading this kind you know major women's wrestling women only 40 wrestlers in the roster and 30, 40 other staff, wrestlers, ring crew, the sound guy to a concession and and or the ring and the, you know, the, the steel chairs. You know, they had the 300 folding chair in that truck too because sometimes they run shows in the middle of nowhere, like mm. open space. Sure. You know, they set up the ring, they set up their own chairs, like, oh, they... They carry three to five hundred cheers in that truck too. But it was wrestlers and young wrestlers and rookies and the stars all got together. They build the ring, they run the show, they wrestle, they pack up and leave again. And Bo Nakano was like the head hunter of that when she was what, 22, 23? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, she's 56 now, okay? She's 56. And but Alandra Blaze Medusa against Bonacana in America was 30 years ago. That means she was in America doing this WWE, you know, around the world circuit when she was what, 26, 27? 
Yeah. That's pretty young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Very. All right. We'll, we'll fast forward, forward a little bit. She dropped the you know red belt world championship uh wwwa we call it wwwa because world women's wrestling association wwwa red belt it actually this title trace the that the origin of this very championship you can trace back to mildred bark title mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so it's really like they didn't make up the championship it, that the lineage was from Authentic Mildred Park. Yeah. So it's real world title that came from America and stayed in Japan. They really changed that. In, for instance, when Bo Nakano retired, uh, we, had to, we had to fast forward a little bit. She, when she retired, finally retired in 2012, she looked all over for this physical red belt title. She wanted to obtain that actual physical title because she wanted she wanted to keep it in her house. Then found it, but couldn't get it because it was part of the old Japan woman and the Matsunaga family's like family debt. The physical championship belt was still, you know taken away from her. Yeah, but the red belt still exists somewhere in Tokyo. Anyhow, that uh, for this. World Championship reign of Bonacano lasted three years, okay? And she, Bonacano finally dropped the title to next superstar, Aja Khan, November of 92. It was a time all Japan women was still making wrestlers to retire at the age of 25. She dropped the world title to Aja Khan at the end of her, tw- you know, age 24. Then actually she already accomplished everything there to accomplish for all Japan women. Then she did not want to retire. And this wrestling is the only thing she, she admitted that this is the only thing I could do. Then she decided to graduate from all Japan women and went to Mexico first. Went to Mexico and won the CMLL, not a very traditional title, right? Mm-hmm. CMLL Women's World Title in Mexico. Then came back and there was a WWE tour in Japan. It's called Mania Tour in May of 1994. At the time, WWE, WWF didn't have TV, only VHS video, the Coliseum video series, no TV, just magazine coverage. And, you know, UWF and Inoki and this, you know, f- that the Misawa era b- had begun and Japanese fans were still kind of prejudiced about WWF. Eh, that's not that good, right? And this 1994 Mania Tour had great roster. You know, champion was Bret Hart. You had, uh, you had Bret Hart, The Undertaker came, Macho Man Randy Savage came. Uh, Bam Bam Bigaro, Yokozuna, Owen Hart, Bob Backen, One to Three Kid, uh, the, the Billy and Bart Gunn, uh, Someone's, Alundra Blaze. It was like a very strong roster, you know, tour. But it wasn't really that big of a tour, you know. They ran big houses like Yokohama Arena, the Sapporo, the, the, you know, Nagoya, and Os- Yokohama, Sapporo, Nagoya, Osaka, all big, big arena. But didn't really draw, but they discovered Bo Nakano in there. Mm-hmm. You know? Bo, Saki Hasegawa, Kyoko, uh, you know, male uh, wrestler, Shinzaki, you know, you know the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they, WWE executive who was running the, the Japan tour, the Mania tour, like, I like the Buddhist monk guy, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Jinsei Shinzaki was discovered by WWE and he, you know the rest of the story that he went to America and became Hakushi. And he was that the uh, Alandra Blaze era, formerly known as Medusa in Japan, just you know, rewind the tape about three years. She was all Japan women's wrestler, but went back to America and was a manager for WCW for a recruit. But as a wrestler, Alandra Blaze, she became champion. And women's division was all about Alandra Blaze and her opponent. She really needed to have the match that the Medusa, the Alandra Brez wanted to have, therefore Japanese style match. And 
Bo Nakano, they wanted Bo Nakano to be in WWF. Yeah. Um, 94, you know, 94, 95 era of WWE was that the champion was Bret Hart or either Bret Hart or Diesel, Kevin Nash. Remember mm. that era? Intercontinental champion was Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, or Shawn Michaels, mm. sometimes Gold Dust, mm. or somebody like Ahmed Johnson, if you mm. remember. That era, Alandra Blaze against Bonacano really had their place. You know, it wasn't like the, the match you go to concession or go to bathroom or something like that. It was important to sit and watch Bonacano against Alandra Blaze. It's so different from what you think the American fans thought of women's wrestling, right? There was nothing like that in my watching of WWF. In well, women's life. wrestling in general, yeah, the women's image of women's general, wrestling in general, but also just what they were doing was very ahead of its time. They were yeah. throwing German suplexes at each other on the floor. They were doing missile drop kicks. They missile drop kicks, yeah. The Yave submission. They were, and what they looked like. Bull Nakano's no. I mean, no one in Japan looked like Bull Nakano. I mean, in the states at that time. Absolutely, no one looked like her. Yeah, probably the only Japanese female wrestler WWE fan remembered was probably Jumping Bomb Angels. It was really, really good. It was really, but it was brief, and there was a yeah. I remember those match because there wasn't just one match with uh with Alundra Blaze and Bull Nakano. There was like a series that you saw. Yeah, a good amount of time. It was on the it was on the new Raw show. Yeah, Monday yeah. Night Raw. But I remember that was one of the. You know, highlight matches that would mm. be end up on a lot of the you know the Coliseum home video, matches. right, right. Hold those and, matches, and also that was beginning of like a WWF against WCW, right? Yeah, and and Bret Hart like a first Bret Reign Bret Hart era to Diesel Kevin Nash era, good one third of the year, like a good three or four months out of the year, they were touring in Europe, mm -hmm. WWE at the time, and. From America, they toured, uh, you know, Bonacano and Alandro Blaze together. They toured Europe, then came back to America and wrestled more. And like one month, Bonacano told me once that uh, Alandro Blaze and Bonacano had 28 matches in one month period. So almost every day. <laughs> every day. But what they were doing, like, yeah, like, lot like WWE uh, house shows, you have same matchup and same opponent go around the horn, right? Mm -hmm. And then almost have very similar, like if not the exact same match. But uh, Alandra Blaze, Medusa, and Bonacano did not want to do that. So all those 28 matches in one month period, they changed it. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get creative. Let's get creative and let's change things around. What worked tonight? Well, let's do it again tomorrow. What didn't really work? Uh, let's drop that one. You know, Alandra Blaze, Medusa's Japanese speaking ability, and Bo Nakano's English, you know, neither were perfect, but they do speak. Alandra Blaze, Medusa's Japanese speaking, and Bo Nakano's English. But actually, it really proved the fact that wrestling has no language barrier. Mm. You know, they started working wrestle against you know, each other intuitively. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, okay, not it's like a, the body, you know, movement called the match inside the ring. Mm -hmm. You know, you do this and you do that, and just this, they had this just, just very unique chemical, huh? Very you know, chemistry, unique chemical, yeah. exactly. Chemistry, yeah, chemistry, yeah. yeah. So, uh, something they only... actually they changed that because at the time you get sick of working against each other, you know, for like let alone 28 matches in one month period, but they did that for like a seven month period, you know? So but sometimes that's how you get the, the best, best out match of, out of uh, each other. Rivalry, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. Flair mm -hmm. and Steamboat, they wrestle each other. How many? Oh, oh, Flair and Steamboat. Yeah. Yeah. The most good matches were oh, Flair against Dusty. How many times sure. they did that? Yeah. So yeah. sometimes there, are, there's a, a pair or maybe a tag mm -hmm. team, like uh, you know, a couple people that they just have some but they, kind of chemistry, and also politically within WWE, you know, hierarchy, they complemented each other, 
and they 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 they, they had the place in the car. You had Bret Hart, you know, Diesel, Kevin Nash, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, young one to three kids, a very very young Triple H, and you know they had this structure, and they really stood as women's wrestler, not like. Like killing the time, uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, no, it was a highlight of, of those times. I think so. For sure. Yeah, and for me as a kid, I watched it, and it's one of the things that sticks out the most. Still. Yeah, and then yeah, and it's like a, almost uh, as a kid, like a fun memory, right? Going to show. Very. Yeah, you have Alondra Blaze against Paul Nakano live. All right, you know, uh, it, it and, was just uh, so different. Yeah, it, yeah. It was... So that was like actually Paul Nakano's favorite time too, you know. And if you remember, nine December, uh, November nineteen ninety four, All Japan Women's w- w- first and the last Tokyo Dome show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tokyo Dome show. They brought the Alondra Blaze Bonakano package back from WWF into All Japan Women's Ring. Yeah, so they were back together because it was like a real huge. You know, in a promotion, All Japan Women, the, the JWP, the LLPW, FMW Women's Division, all, all these, you know, and MMM fight. The the Tokyo All Japan Women's Tokyo Dome show lasted what, eleven hours? <laughs> you know? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and uh, they brought the WWF title match, Bonakano Alandra Blaze match back to Japanese ring. Then they brought that back to America. When Bo dropped the title back to uh, Medusa, yeah. So that was like um, she Bo Nakano technically wasn't part of All Japan Women anymore. She was on her own, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, like above everybody else. She wasn't champion, but she was almost above championship. And right. if you remember this, nineteen ninety five. North Korea, like infamous event, you know, Religion in May Day in Stadium. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Two shows, 190,000 people each night. <laughs> I mean, it's a legacy, but the, and two nights, they drew 380,000 people for wrestling show. Not crazy or what? Bonakano was part of that. See, people remember Antonio Antonio Inoki against Ric Flair for the first time and last time ever, mm-hmm. if, you know, in front of North Korea of all places, and the uh, entire WCW and Eric Bischoff crew was on it, and New Japan crew was on it, and actually four women's wrestlers: Bo Nakano, Akira Hokuto, Manami Toyota, and Mariko Yoshida. Four Japanese wrestlers on that tour, and kind of useless trivia: Kensuke. Sasaki and Akira Hokuto met during this North Korean tour, and next day they were engaged. Mm. And they are still married to this day, happily ever after. You know, this, that's another story that came out of that. And what was interesting was that the famous main event was Antonio Inoki against Ric Flair, right? Mm-hmm. And the first night, actually, that the main event was Shinya Hashimoto against Scott Norton. That sounds very New Japan, right? Yeah. Yeah. And but the people remember very well the match was Bo Nakano against Akira Hokuto. Oh, yeah. Single match. Well, in Japan, Akira Hokuto against Bo Nakano, they, I'm sure they've done done a couple dozen times by then. Mm-hmm. But it was the audience who never watched it. Lick Flair never watched it. Eric Bischoff never watched it, women's wrestling, and Road Warrior Hawk. It's like, I like Bonacano. I want to make a tag team with him. Like, <laughs> Bonacano and that didn't happen, okay? But the Road Warrior Hawk and Bonacano as a tag team, that sounds intriguing, you know? Yeah. That didn't happen. But the Road Warrior Hawk really wanted it, you know? So even among the, the very knowledgeable or like a people inside wrestling business, sometimes they really had time to watch and witness when Japanese women's wrestling matches, mm. you know, you were there. So Eric Bischoff, Rick, Rick Flair, and all the, all these important people from WCW witnessed Bonakano and Akira Hokuto match right in front of you. It's like, 
that's Japanese women's wrestling. Then that brought Bo back to WCW this time. Yeah. So not the same package. By then, Alandra Blaze, not anymore, not 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 Alandra Blaze anymore, but the back to Medusa, you know, dropping the WWF title and garbage can and then to switch to Monday Nitro and all these things, if you remember. Mm-hmm. A lot of wrestlers from WWF were migrated into WCW. So Medusa was back with WCW. And this time, Bo Nakano went back to America, not the, not WWF, but went to WCW, 96. Yeah. That's where she actually retired without telling people she was retired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But 97, she was like 20, it's like 97, right? 96, she, 97, yeah. Yeah, she was what the... Not even 30. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. She was born in 1968, right? Mm-hmm. Retired 1997. Like, not quite 30 years later. You know? And for the for the next 10 years, you know, 1998 to ni- 2008, nobody could find Bonacano. I heard the story she was living in in Orlando, but not talking to anybody from wrestling industry. She was playing golf, you know? Hmm. And WWE, uh, you know, it's much like Major League Baseball. They give you very good visa, you know, stamp. Yeah, working visa. But the status was really the the good one that she obtained green card in America, you know, so she could live, right? And what she wanted to do after wrestling was to become professional golfer this time, mm-hmm. you know. And then she had training and, uh, you know, like a professional license thing. She did become lesson pro, you know. The lesson pro is like a professional golfer to train amateurs, mm-hmm. but not the prof- top-ranked professional golfer to be in a major tour, sure, you know. not a competitor. Right. But the, she was in Orlando for like nine years. Mm. And I was told that uh, Bo Nakano wouldn't see anybody from wrestling. It's like, mm. Why? It's like, well, she left, you know? And she's not, a, she's not Bo Nakano anymore. She's Keiko Nakano and living her life after wrestling. Okay. And I didn't think I would see her, you know? Then she came back to Japan in, in 2008 and announced that she was now married. You know, and 2010, she opened the Nakano no Buruchan bar, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, she was back like in, in the public eyes and in front of TV camera, whole thing. And finally decided to have retirement ceremony and retirement show to January, January of 2018. Yeah. She wanted to look like Bo Nakano, so she gained extra 40 pounds or something and had his hair, you know, sticking up again, had this, you know, makeup and everything to look like Bo Nakano. She didn't wrestle. Mm. She did not wrestle, but this, her pride tells that if she is to come in front of the live audience, she has to look like Bo Nakano, Mm. you know? So, uh, useless trivia, that night, uh, Feb- uh, the January of 2018, <clears throat> Tokyo Dome City Hall, not the Tokyo Dome, but the smaller venue right next to Tokyo Dome, Tokyo Dome City Hall, Bonakano had a ceremony, but the actual main event match was Kana, now Asuka. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before her, you know, tenure was WWE. Yeah. Probably and, right, uh, right before? Uh, yeah. 2018, yeah, but, she was, yeah. She was <clears throat> there, yeah. That year she went. 2018. January 8th of 2018. So it was right before she, you know, her trip to America then. Yeah. Because oh. Shinsuke Nakamura started uh, 16 and main roster 17, right? Mm-hmm. So it's got to be the following year. Mm. Yeah. But anyhow, that was Kana, Asuka. Okay. Yes. Yeah, who had who headlined Bo Nakano's retirement show. Now that uh, another 10 years have gone by, like 12 years to be exact, 
that she was telling you know her friends bonakano was telling her friends she won the red belt all japan women's world title wwe she won the world title in mexico she won the wwf women wwf women's title in america the only thing she hasn't won was hall of fame yeah she was taking this very seriously then this back in this uh now it's three months uh, two months ago very early january january of this year wwe wanted to have zoom meeting it's like zoom meeting and it was like what's it about right we are inducting you into hall of fame this year so wow and then she really took it seriously yeah so this is going to be her last appearance as bonakano meaning that the I don't see you know how she looks now right mm-hmm. very pretty you know lost away and she's just like a, if just if she walks into a room nobody will think you know or think she was a wrestler right mm-hmm. i mean she looks pretty and it's very feminine and hair very is long and everything yeah different physical appearance yeah but yeah but but when she you know herself just make you know like kind of like you know you have to channel her self into this bona kind of character right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like almost channeling persona you know? yeah that, yeah i think at this wrestlemania weekend hall of fame induction ceremony mm-hmm. she will be bona kind of, meaning that the, her hair will be up this way and she will have this blue you know painting and this well uh what's the women's group that the recently that the sukeban group mm-hmm. yeah bonakano being a commissioner to recognize their world title that she comes out as bonakano so she still occasionally does this hair and makeup and all these things but this will be her final time to come in front of the live audience being born a Kano. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Did, I'm going to Philadelphia. You, that's right. You'll be there. Yeah. You'll uh, you'll be hanging out with her. Yeah, classy. yeah, for the with the whole weekend, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm for like I've been involved with women's wrestling, you know, all through nineties I was doing the color commentator on women's all Japan women's videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh you know, you have like a hidden ranking in a, inside, right? Who is, you know, the number one and the n- number two and who's the biggest third and whomever. And in my book, Bo Nakano has always been number one superstar. Past, present, fu- future, I don't know. But the, in my mind, Bo Nakano has always been the number one woman superstar. Yeah. It's fair to say. Kind of, yeah. I think so. so that's that was my uh Bonacano story. Yeah, she's been doing this ever since she was 15 years old. They got her first world title when she was age 21. And when she was traveling all over the world, she was still in her 20s. Oh my gosh, you know, into early 30s. But but today's wrestler, let's think about somebody is 26 years old. That's young wrestler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when Bonacan was 26, she had this presence of real superstar veteran, main event, multi world you know, world champion. It's like she had this something about her. It looked like veteran that she's well, she's been doing that forever, ever since she was 15 years old. But something about her or the way she carried herself, you know. She had a charisma, she had an aura. Oh, superstar superstar yeah so and the nunchucks oh yeah yeah yeah. we didn't talk about her nunchuck yeah 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 Uh, and also when she was 240 Mm poundish she was doing moonsault too that's right (laughs) and uh guillotine leg drop guillotine leg drop the famous one and it was 1990 um at the yokohama buntai there was a Bonakano against Aja Khan. There's, there's a series of matches. Hmm. Cage match from the oh, from the top. Yeah, from the top of the cage. What the 20 feet? Mm-hmm. Top of the cage. She dove off leg dropped 
Aja Kong. Then she bounced up, back up. You know, I mean, that length, not a crossbody, but the the, the guillotine leg drop from yeah. that high. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's on video. So you know, somebody should find it in YouTube. Oh, it's, yeah. I, I I believe it's on YouTube. Yeah, but it was before. I mean, we kind of see it. We see it more and more. You know, every few days, almost. Yeah. What? Yeah. It, that's not a good. That's not a comment on anything. It's just what it is. But back then, that was almost unthinkable. It was yeah, almost yeah. unthinkable. Whomever did the first should have credit, you know? Right, right. If somebody watched some rest, young wrestlers or independent wrestlers out there, watch the video, and I got to do it this weekend, you're not original, hmm. you know? This was before ECW. This was only, you only saw it if you, you, you Yeah, and trader. also, yeah, tape trader, VHS. No internet, no emails. Or if you, know, you saw them on WWF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the footage exists. And uh, yeah, it's all there. So I, I can't say what was Bonacano's best match because there's like a different era, different period, different opponent. They're all good, you know. And uh, yeah. But the Bonacano is not going to wrestle again. So. Mm. All we can have is that her, you know, matches and vi- on on the video from eighties and nineties. Yeah, there are plenty. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this time she will come in front of WWE audience, WWE universe, and this is her final chapter, being Bonacano and finally being inducted into WWE Hall of Fame. It's big. Yeah, big. I think so. I think so. Yeah, well, like you and I talked about, yeah, some people dispute that the WWE Hall of Fame, only WWE, right? But, but it's still biggest Hall of Fame, you know, ceremony, yeah. It's and, meaningful to her, and I think it's meaningful to a lot of people, so. Yeah, yeah, should yeah. Be, should be good, and congratulations to Ms. And Bowman first Bowman. female wrestler from Japan hmm? to be in there, right. yeah. So she's always been the pioneer. Yeah. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I wonder, are, is, are we going to see her in that new, the upcoming Dump Matsumoto uh, movie? The movie? Or, or uh, probably somebody's or playing her part, not herself, herself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a wrestling part. Yeah. Because, you know, when we say, we talk about Dump Matsumoto, that's a whole different era of Bull Nakano. That's like... Uh, it's it's important, but it's different than when we talk about WWF. Different. Yeah, Dump Mat Dump Matsumoto was a leader of the team, but she didn't really wrestle. She was a heavy woman with makeup and just kendo stick and uh, yeah. chair shot. You know what I'm saying? Like a Sheik but, or Abdullah or something. Yeah, yeah. But the Bo Nakano had the same type of gimmick, but she really wrestled and captured like educated male wrestling fans' eyes. Oh, is good. good. Yeah, yeah. So it's like wrestling itself talked. It mm-hmm. spoke for itself. And that's very important, you know, because even in Japan, a lot of male wrestling fans were really prejudiced, you know, about women's wrestler all the way to like 1989. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and Bonacano really audience. changed it. Yeah. yeah. Bonacano really grabbed them by the head. He's like, watch my match. And no explanation needed. You know, you just sit and watch, sit through Bonacan's wrestling matches. This wrestler is good. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like my, yeah. Like I opened my eyes too. You know, the Bonacan is so, so special. Very special. Mm-hmm. So that was it. And I hope that, uh, uh, you know, this episode of our Write That Down podcast was informative and mm-hmm. somewhat educational and uh, if Bonacano happened to be some name from 30 years ago you don't know much you know just it's worth going out of your way and find Bonacano footage and watch don't skip it watch the entire match you know he she is every bit as good as your Rick Flair in her, you know, his prime or Bret Hart's storytelling matches and no language barrier, which which is a beauty of 
professional wrestling and no gender barrier how's that mm-hmm. yeah so she's all that i think it'll be uh it's going to be exciting to see the induction when is that that's uh uh friday april. night oh that's yeah. this friday like the... no 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 it, it, the the oh. night before wrestlemania for so day one. About two weeks from the night we are recording a- april this. 4th yeah April fourth, April fifth, yeah. fourth, fifth, yeah, yeah. The Friday night, okay. Yeah, same building right after SmackDown. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's, it's exciting. Yeah, we'll yeah. have to do yeah. a special episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. PR. All the Philadelphia would be really crazy because WrestleCon's there. Yeah. That the uh, Battleground Championship Wrestling, that the Philadelphia Wrestling Company is doing ECW reunion at the. They don't call it ECW Arena anymore, but uh, you know, different name, but the building is the same. And a lot of the, well, Stardom still has that the Philadelphia shows, and a lot of shows all, all 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 weekend, if not WrestleMania night one and night two, and Hall of Fame, SmackDown, and you have fifteen other wrestling shows in town that weekend. It'll be really crazy. I'm gonna be uh, yeah, get your energy up for that. <laughs> yeah. Exhausting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Before we wrap this one, mm-hmm. we want to find you on social media. Where can we? Uh, Fumi you? Saito on Facebook or Fumi Hikodai on Twitter X, I should say. At Fumi Hikodai, F U M I H I K O D A Y O, Fumi Hikodai, or just Fumi Saito on Facebook. I do have Instagram, face Fumi Saito No Space 2001. And send I'm, us questions. We'll be doing a QA episode. Yeah, that's right. So uh, email us. You can email this is right that down at gmail.com. That's where you can email the questions and we'll see those. And All right. uh, we're, we're, we're gathering those together. So until next time, we'll make it so long from Tokyo. <laughs>